So here I always try to take a C debate a college um, students and then this video in a sense says that this conversation could convince Obama to vote for President Donald J. Trump if he loved America. That could be a very interesting one. So without any further ado, let's get down to the video and listen to this very conversation. All right, disagreements most welcome, yes. Okay, so I want to start off by saying, Vivek, I really like support you, I love you. I, I like I would vote for you if you were running right now. Thank you, man. I would say I'm like I would say I'm I lean Republican, but um what I disagree with is just your endorsement of Trump. I think I don't support Trump or Kamala. I'm undecided on who I'm gonna vote for. So I just I just really dislike Trump just generally and just because of like his character. Um so I would like to ask you let me just let me just ask you to say more. Why? Just because just like his rhetoric, the thing that just the way he talks, um how he talks about women, how he talks just about a lot of other um, groups. I, I do find his policy that I, I agree with almost all of his policy, but I can't find my, I can't morally, like for myself, vote for Trump or Kamala. So why should I vote for Trump? So you should vote for Trump because he can make your life better. Okay. That's the bottom line. You're not yeah. voting for a priest, you're not voting for a pastor, you're not voting for who's gonna be your father or your child. You're voting for who's actually gonna be your president. You got a controlled experiment here. You rarely get this in American history. It's only happened once before when Grover Cleveland was elected for president the second time. You got four years under Donald Trump, stayed out of World War III, stayed out of conflicts with North Korea, Iran, Russia, conflict-free world stage. It's your generation that bears the war of fighting the wars in Iraq or Afghanistan. It's going to be the next version of that. It's your generation. That backpack isn't going to be filled with books. It's going to be filled with something else, fighting somebody else's war if we go to World War III. Donald Trump kept us out of it. Our economy was growing. Inflation was down. Wages were up, and we didn't have mass illegal migration in this country. Compare that to four years of Biden, and it really has been Kamala Harris with Biden. Open borders, mass illegal migration of a scale we haven't seen in this country. Wages have not gone up, while inflation costs actually have gone up, and we're closer to World War III than we've ever been in my lifetime. So I would say that I don't agree with 100% of what Donald Trump says. I don't agree with 100% of what Charlie Kirk says. He doesn't agree with 100% of what I say. No two people agree with 100% of what they say. You don't have to agree with 100% of what Donald Trump says to vote for him. You just have to know that he's going to be the guy who's going to make your life better. And you says, you know, Pitt 28, yeah. you graduate in 28? Yeah, yeah. By the time you graduate in 2028, you will be more likely to have a high-paying, stable job if, got, if Donald Trump is U.S. president for the next four years while you're here at Pitt than if Kamala Harris is in that job. That's why you should vote for him. Let, let me add one thing, and then I'll ask you a question. You're not voting for Trump or Kamala. You are voting for 5,000 people that will run the government. The question is, do you think more people like Vivek running the government or more people like Tony Fauci running the government is a better direction? Okay. Let me also ask you, outside of rhetoric, 20 years from now, what matters more? The wars that a president prevents or the things that a president says while he's president? Yeah, that's true. Um, also, speaking of 28, are you going to run in 2028? We'll talk when you graduate. All right, thank you. <laughs> wow, well, it seems like people are much more interested in Vivi whether he's going to run for president. But then if you look at the conversation they had, okay, the policy of President Donald J. Trump in Assam are just okay. They are just good in Assam for the people. They are good in Assam for the public. And they are good for anyone in Assam who loves in Assam America. No wonder the title says that it can even make Obama to vote for President Donald J. Trump. Well, even though we know he was still not going to vote for Trump anyway. <laughs> But anyway, you understand, if you look at you some of the things you understand being discussed, because if you look at it, you understand, currently, what is really happening, you understand, right now, you understand, in the Middle East, or shall I say, in the world itself, like, it's something else. Just as for yesterday, we saw what that is happening, you understand, between um, Israel and Yemen, right? You could see, you understand, at the sport place that uh, the people, you understand, the measles that were sent to the sport place. You just believe with me that in a sense everything is coming to an end. Now, are we going to be talking about what is happening in a sense in Gaza? Or we're talking about what is happening in Jordan? Or we're talking about what is currently happening in uh, Yemen? Not to talk about in a sense the Israel and the Iran. Now, we have Russia in the other way around, you understand, with Ukraine. You see some of these problems. So that's why we just felt that once Trump, you understand, is the president, some of these things, you understand, will not be happening. It's not going to benefit I and you. What are what is me and you going to gain if the world is on war? We are going to gain nothing. So 
why not the American people should put someone that can be able to change some of these narratives? Because the dynamic or the pace in which some of these things is going is getting worse day by day. Tomorrow we don't know, you understand, which country it will be next. We do not know. So that is why, you understand, we are saying that what vote Trump, you understand, by November, and he has already promised that once, you understand, he was voted or once he's been voted you understand, as the president of the United States, that some of this war, you understand, will stop. So why not, you understand, we should just vote for him so that at least everyone, you understand, will be in peace. That's just it. Why not we just vote for him? Why not the American people should do us a favor? By voting Trump, so that some of those things, you understand, will just, you understand, cease, so that everyone, you understand, will be at peace, so that we don't have to be worried about war. Maybe we should be worried about, you understand, where we'll be after we leave this very place, because people have what lost, you understand, their priority why they are here on this very earth. People have forgotten why we are here. People have forgotten that it's just a temporary basis. People have forgotten that we are not going to live here forever. But then there's actually a place that we are going to end up. People have forgotten, you understand, about some of those things. And then that is why people are much more indulged with the love of things of this world. But then at the end of the day, you're going to die and you're going to carry nothing to heaven. And that is the reason why we have to turn to God because it seems like some of our leaders has forgotten or some of the people on this world has forgotten about the love of God. And that is why we are much more in love with material things, about peace of land, about things that we are going to gain, things that we are not going to use forever, things that we are not going to take to heaven. And at the end of the day, people are losing their lives. So if I lose my life or you lose your life today, where are you going to find yourself? Because this is directly the signs of the last day that the Bible have already, you understand, let us know about some of these signs that there will be war, there will be pestilence, there will be earthquake. And some of these things, you understand, are already happening. It means that what the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, you understand, has come. Let's not just say his name. It has come already. And then that is the reason why when you die, you are going to find yourself. That is the reason why what you have to go back to Him. You have to go back to God. You have to surrender to Him. You have to accept Christ in a, into your life. So that in case this very body died, all right, you still have another life again. But if you understand, you do not accept Christ, where do you think you're going to find yourself? And that's why he says that we should go and preach the good news to those that are safe, are safe, and those who reject in us and the message of Jesus, that they will be condemned. So, where do you think you're going to find yourself? Where do you think your family are going to find themselves? Where do you think your friends are going to find themselves? It's a question that we should all reflect on it, and then we should do the right thing. And the best thing you can do is you should go before him, confess to him, confess him as your Lord and personal Savior, and be safe. That's just a simple message that I have for you today. So, if you believe, you understand, in the message of Jesus, or you have not accepted him, you understand, into your life, you can send me a DM at the comment section so that I can walk you through the process so that you can all become safe in Christ Jesus. So, this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, you like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So, you remain blessed and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.